Between this, the Rice stuff, and Apollo 13, you got space and beyond. What's up guys, welcome to Movie Important. It's a new review of First Man. The newest film from Wonderkin, Damien Chazelle, and starring Ryan Gosling, Kyle Chandler, Claire Foy, and Jason Clark. So, Neil Armstrong was well regarded as one of the pioneers of the space program. He flew in Gemini. He, uh, he also was a test pilot. He was a very reserved guy, had a lot of family issues, so on and so forth. And Damien Giselle decided after doing La La Land, he wanted to tackle the idea of what made Neil Armstrong tick, what made him such a recluse, why he was the way he was. And we get First Man, which follows, like I said, Ryan Gosling from the moments that he's a test pilot to eventually him flying or piloting Apollo 11 and becoming the first man on the moon. And overall, this movie is, it's pretty great. It's, it's a fun movie to watch. It's a very slow burn movie, but it's very Damien Chazelle. The shots are very kinetic with musical interludes. They're using a lot of jazz in this movie. The shots that he's using is very familiar with what you see in uh, like La La Land and Whiplash. You know, it's very, like I said, kinetic. And then the visual flair, the visual effects, like the shots when Apollo 11 was taking off, are pretty fantastic. It's some of the best CGI work I've seen in a long time and, you know, with like Star Wars and stuff like that. But Damien Chazelle has this weird handle on movies, kind of like Christopher Nolan, where he is so confident in what he's doing that everything just bleeds perfect on the screen. This movie, like, it's shot like a 60s movie. It's shot like the right stuff. It's shot like Apollo 13. It gives you the real inner workings of Neil Armstrong itself. And... It just can't be understated how good Damien Chazelle is as a director. La La Land is one of the best musicals ever made. I don't care what anybody thinks. Whiplash, one of the best movies dealing with you know drumming and musicals altogether. And this movie is just, it's really that good. It's not a perfect movie. It does struggle. I think there could have been more testing done with, you know, with the pilots. It's kind of like in the right stuff where there was a lot of behind the scenes contingency and drama and workings and inner workings and so on and so forth you don't get a lot of that here you get a lot of kind of time lapse after time lapse or after time lapse you've seen Neil Armstrong involve himself with like famous people like Jim Lovell, Chris Gussum, um, people very well known people you know well, well known in the NASA program and it also can be understated that Ryan Gosling is really good he's a I don't understand why He's not more appreciative, appreciative as one of the best actors of our time because he is outstanding here. He gives you the emotion of what it's like to be Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong just wasn't a guy who wanted to talk to people. He dealt with a lot of personal issues. He dealt with a lot of tragedy with between the test pilots and the Apollo 1, uh, the death of the three astronauts with Gus Grissom and the character Jason Clark was playing. And you can see why, even though the Apollo 11 was, was regarded as one of the most famous things in American history, it didn't affect him in the way that it affected us because he knew the stakes of what he was doing, but he also knew that his family was struggling with the idea that he may never come back because this is very important stuff, but it's very, very dangerous what they're doing. I mean, you look at the Apollo 1 fire that killed those astronauts and you look at like the Apollo 13 stuff like that he but he knew what he was doing was going to be regarded but it was you know so on and so forth but plays his wife June Armstrong um she's really good I don't really know much about her I know she was in the crown she's going to be in the next uh, girl with the dragon tattoo movie but she she's just giving a great performance showing that she's really struggling with Neil Armstrong and what he's wanting to accomplish and she gives a bravado performance. It's an Oscar-worthy performance. It's right up there with, you know, the best of the year. And I, I can't be understated, like, how she carries the movie. She's, like, the backbone of this family after they've lost their daughter. And it's just, it's a great performance. And Jason Clark's amazing in the movie. And Kyle Chandler, for however long he's in it, is pretty amazing. Patrick Fugit, who I haven't seen since, like, Almost Famous is in this movie. He's in a small part. Um, he's really good. I mean, Damien Giselle, he got an amazing cast for this movie, and it really shows. It really, sh it's just a really engaging movie. Like I said, 
the parts that I didn't like, it just, it felt like there could have been more to it. And I just, I felt like this movie could have been a little bit shorter. Could have probably been two hours and been fine, but I don't know. I, I still like the movie. I still definitely recommend it, but it's just, there are some things that I wish could have been better. Some things I wish it could have been, you know, they were fine. Um, it ends weirdly. The stuff when they, the, between the Gemini mission and the Apollo 11 mission, it kind of moves so quickly that you kind of just are jerked back and forth. But um, it's not going to be one of my top 10 movies of the year, but it's definitely a movie you should watch because, you know, like I said, with the right stuff and like I said, with uh, with like Apollo 13, this actually could fit with Apollo 13. It's just like a bookends uh, type of story. But, you know, like I said, it's it's good. It's good for what it is. Um, that's all I can say. So, But that's it. That's my take on First Man. If you like what you see, as always, remember to rate, subscribe, comment on YouTube. Facebook, Twitter, email me at lapolda 138 gmail.com if you have any questions. But if you've seen the movie, tell me below what you think. But otherwise, we'll see you guys later. Peace.